Okay. Begin on this. Uh, make sure you've got a strap today. We're going to use it. So anything like that. Um, I'm just going to get in the habit of always having my block around. If you have anything like that, uh, it might be useful, but I don't have a specific plan for a block today. Uh, we're going to do some shoulder work. We're going to do some work in hands. Um, I was with a, friend, a good friend of mine the other day, and I, I come back to this theme a lot because it's consistently relevant. I think it keeps coming back into our lives. The idea of embracing the concept of a pariagraha or non-attachment as just having open hands. Because I can still make contact with open hands. I can still hold something. I can still experience it. But I don't have to grasp and hold on and not let go, right? Because then, of course, we don't have room for anything else to come in. And then we're just like holding on to this thing that might no longer be serving us or might no longer be best to be held with us. And this came up with my friend because he has, um, we have a mutual friend that we no longer speak to. And he was talking about how he's having a hard time, even after over a year of this, with managing that, those feelings of, of grief for their friendship being over and anger about what she did. And, and then also he's had a really difficult relationship with his mom all through his life. And he's just it's like, I don't, I don't know how to just like let all of this go and let all of this not be with me anymore. I said, well, instead of trying to just throw it away as if it doesn't matter anymore because he's grown so much and learned a lot from both of these relationships not going well, like, can you have this open palm response to it? Can you let it come in in ways in which you allow the feelings that are very valid, can you acknowledge the experience you've had, and then leave the palms open, don't hold on, because it's going to move away when it's no longer right for us. And even good things move away when they're no longer right for us, because then we have more space open in order to take something in, in order to take in the next thing, the next lesson, the next joy factor, whatever it is. So sometimes making contact, sometimes using that contact to grow, but not grasping onto it. So with your palms open in your lap, take a few deep belly breaths. So you wanna feel all of this air coming into your body, feel the fullness, and at some point in that breath, you're gonna to have to let it go. So start to empty yourself out, feel your belly and your chest softening. And then we need to take more in, feel that big breath in. Exhaling to let it go. Keep going in with these big diaphragmatic breaths, feeling the physical fullness in your body and the space that's left by your exhale. Take another two full rounds of breath, big and full in the belly. And keeping that breath going, maybe a little bit less strong and deep into the belly. We're gonna start with some face brushing. Take your index finger and your thumb together. Brush the base of the thumb from the center of your forehead outwards towards the temples. And then moving from the sides of your nose out to your temples along your cheekbones. Tracing the jaw bones from the temples down to your chin. And tracing the left lines from the sides of your nose down to your chin. Taking your fingertips behind your ears, massaging that soft spot, finding the bony spot, lifting up from that spot, and keeping that lift in your spine as you drop your hands down, open palmed into your lap. And come back to that breath. And 
Taking another deep breath in through your nose. Big exhale through the mouth. Again, like that. For three ohms. Uh, start to open your eyes and take our hands and interlace our fingers and then start switching slowly the cross of your fingers. Notice if you're having any responsiveness in the shoulders or if your breath is no longer as steady. As you try to soften your shoulders and steady your breath, you might start to get the fingers working just a little bit faster. I'm not cooperating so much today. And then try to take a smooth, steady breath, still moving really fast around these fingers, inhaling and exhaling. Then shake that out. Then take your um, take your thumb on your um, on your left hand and massage outwards along your fingertips. Just moving all the way down those finger bones. When you get through all the fingers on your right hand, start using the left or the right thumb to massage the left finger bones. And then taking one hand, let the palm face forward, gently guide your fingertips down. And then let the palm face back to you. Gently stretch those fingertips down and try to do it from more so from the base of the fingers rather than the fingertips. So you're really getting that, that wrist just gently stretched. And then switch to the other hand. So you use your fingertips to fingertips to let the palm face forward, stretch the wrist this way. And then turn the palm over, press more on the base of the fingers, more at the knuckles to stretch the wrist. out, make some circles in your fingers, like a little spell casty sort of thing. Circle in the other direction. And take three big circles of the arms, reaching them up overhead, taking a big inhale, kind of stretch and lift in your spine. Exhale, bringing the hands down through your heart. Inhale. Letting those arms open up. Exhale, hands draw down. Again, like that. Drawing those hands back in. And then starting to move yourself into child's pose. If child's pose doesn't sound really good to you, if you don't want to have your knees bent, you can just lay down on your belly. But if child's pose feels okay to you, then coming here, and feeling some of that big diaphragmatic breath work and how it impacts the back of your ribs in this shape. If your shoulders are feeling cranky, you can bend the elbows and draw the arms a little bit closer to you, but if you're able to extend the arms and able to rest the forehead down, letting your body be soft. flat on the belly, hang out here just a little bit longer. If you are in child's pose, you'll have the space to maybe wiggle your arms a little bit further out in front of you. And then try to relax the outsides of your armpits down. Just take two more breaths like this.
and then start to pull yourself up. You're gonna lay down on your side. Bring your strap somewhere near you if you ever have a hard time grabbing onto your foot. So it might be necessary. Doesn't matter which side you lay on, I'm gonna try to do as best I can, top and bottom. Are you gonna lay down on your bottom arm? Wiggle those fingertips out nice and far from you. And then take the other hand up, press your palms together. Your bottom hand will be off of the floor. And if you are in a little bit of a pike, you're not gonna be worried so much about balance. It'll be a little bit more steady. If you wanna come into a really flat line in your body, the balance is challenged a little bit more. Do try to press those palms together and release the outer armpits forward. One more breath out. And then release that pressure. You're gonna take your top leg, go ahead and hold on to it. If you flex your bottom foot, it will help you to um, stay maybe a little bit more stable on that bottom side. You can also bend this leg if you're feeling very off center. Then keep tucking your knee up towards your armpit. So it comes up kind of towards your shoulder here. Coming back to your breath. Maybe you get things a little bit more intense by reaching inside of the leg to hold your shin or your ankle. One more exhale. And then you're gonna let go of the foot so you can bring the knees down towards each other. And as you do, try to use your hand to grab your pant leg or your foot or you just use that strap to kind of loop yourself around, even if you have to come out of line on your side, and then you'll come down trying to bring both knees towards each other. And when you get both knees towards each other, letting your hips open forward, relax your top shoulder back. The elbow might start to bend. Notice your breath. Feeling the front of the top hip open. Take two more breaths. Relax that top collarbone as you exhale. And then start to release your foot slowly. And then you'll come to laying over on the other side. I'm gonna flip over, that way I can still face you. You'll walk your fingertips out on that bottom arm. So you've got as much space around that uh, side body as you can. I can pike or be in a flat line, knowing that the flat line will be a little bit harder to balance in. And then try to take your palms towards each other and press your palms towards each other. Belly draws gently towards the spine, just a little engagement to support you. Outer armpits release forward, or think of softening your inner shoulders. Big breath in, big breath out. Release your hands. You're gonna stay laying down on that bottom arm, and then you're gonna take your top leg, reach up, I like to start grabbing behind the thigh to pull it in. If you flex your bottom foot and kind of push out through the sole of the foot or the ball of the foot, that can help balance. I feel like I'm gonna fall over like all the way through these poses right now. Some days I guess I just like that. And if you wanna take it a little bit differently, it might be a little bit more intense in some hip rotation. And you could, of course, not worry about grabbing from the inside, but maybe you do try to grab from the inside and then come to that balanced place. And then instead of trying to hold up weirdly on the side of your neck, causing tension, you relax the neck, dropping the head down onto your arm. One more exhale. 
and then release your ankle. You're gonna to start to bring the knee down as you do use your strap or your hand to hold onto your foot or your pant leg, whatever makes the most sense to you. And then you're gonna to try to bring the thighs in line and then soften that top collarbone back. So it may not be a big difference in the alignment, but it might be a nice difference in how it feels in the front of the shoulder and the front of that top collarbone. Gently drawing the belly towards the spine for support. Still breathing. One more inhale. Exhaling and softly, gently releasing that foot. You're gonna to come to lean down on your belly. Let's make a pillow for your head with your hand. Rest your forehead. Take a few easy breaths. And take your right hand in underneath your right shoulder. Take your left hand, reach it out to the side with your palm facing down. Look to the right, roll your right leg back in a way that feels good and easy, opening the front of your left shoulder. Stay here for three deep, steady breaths. Make sure that whatever you're doing with your right leg feels pretty good. It's not too intense in the back and you're able to relax the front of your left chest. Softening into that last exhale and then rolling over onto your belly and switching sides. So you'll look over to the left, slide that left hand in, reach that right arm out from your shoulder, palm facing down and roll the left leg back. Just going as far as feels good to you. One more breath in, big breath out. And then rolling over onto your belly, take your hands underneath your shoulders and then press yourself up or try to lift the belly up first to press yourself up. And then when you get your hips above your knees, you're just gonna take the hands and walk them a little bit forward. Make sure that they're about shoulder width apart and press from the outer armpits down into your hands so you feel that strength behind your shoulders. If this feels pretty good, you're gonna start walking those hands further forward. See if you can keep the elbows pointed mostly down. Keep pressing from the outer armpits down into the hands. See if you can rest your head and your heart a little bit lower. Maybe walk the fingertips out a little bit more. One more exhale. And then start walking the hands back towards you. From here, threading the needle, take your right hand and slide it underneath, resting on the outside of your shoulder and your cheek. You can always grab a block and put it underneath your head if it's difficult to bring your head down to your mat space. But it's an option that you might find useful and you might not. One more exhale. And push down into the left hand to support you lifting back up. And then take your left arm and reach it underneath, finding the outside of your shoulder and your head resting softly down into your mat space. The right arm is just for support. If you do take it behind your back, you can do that. There's many modifications of the hand. But just for now, resting the back of that left shoulder. One more exhale. And then coming back up onto your hands. And back to table pose. Walk your hands at least one handprint forward. Lift your belly, open your heart lower as slowly as you feel inclined to onto the mat. And then wiggle your legs back, reach your arms back. You can hold onto the strap or you can hold hands. It's up to you if you'd like to 
use that tool to feel a little bit different space opening. Start with the elbows bent, wrapping the elbows up and go into Shalabhasana from there, reaching the toes back, reaching the elbows back, lifting the heart up and forward. One more breath in. Exhale, lower down. Just a little pause. And then come up into Shalabhasana, maybe arms straight. Maybe you decide not to hold hands this time. Let this one feel good on your body. Still opening the collarbones, still freeing that heart space, breathing in. Exhale, lowering down. Take your hands under your shoulders. Elbows pull back. Curl the toes under. Lift your belly. Push yourself up off of the floor. Curl your toes under. Push yourself up into downward facing dog. Can you get those widespread fingers and the action from the outer arm hits into your hands? On your exhale, sigh, relax your heels. And then coming into a forward fold, walk your feet to your hands and your hands to your feet. Bend your knees, maybe bounce out a little bit, gently wiggle around your head and neck. And letting your head remain heavy as you roll yourself up to standing. Taking your time. When you arrive, taking a moment to just orient yourself, feeling the blood go in the places you're used to it being. And then we're going to come um, up into a wide legged forward fold. So take your feet out pretty wide, let your toes face forward. Take a big breath in, reach your arms up. And then exhale, fold forward, maybe pause halfway, and then come down all the way, releasing your head, maybe giving it another of those little bobble heads. Try to press down through all four corners of your feet. Knees can be bent. Then so take your right hand and just move it about a handprint further forward. You can go more, but just a handprint is probably enough. And then you're gonna look under your right arm for your right shin. Maybe you just come up onto your left fingertips. Maybe your left fingertips get closer to your right foot. Maybe your left fingertips hold on to your right leg or right foot. So you're kind of twisting underneath yourself here. Still standing strong on your feet. And exhaling and unwinding that bottom arm. Come up on the fingertips so your head lifts up a little bit. And exhale, soften back into that fold. You're gonna take your left hand about a handprint or so forward. It can go more, it doesn't have to. And then you're gonna look underneath that left arm. Maybe you come up on the right fingertip. Maybe your right fingertips reach to or towards your left leg, strong feet. Big exhale. And unwind your twist, bring your hands in, lift your heart up, little bend in the knees, belly to the spine, hands to the hips, take your time coming up to standing. When you come up to standing, we're gonna move into warrior two over towards the right side. So turn your toes over, then turn the left toes in, bend into the right leg. From here, from warrior two, keeping the leg steady, lift up in the peaceful warrior and really feel the freedom on the outside of the shoulder and the softness on the inside of the shoulder here. Big breath in. Take breath out, back to warrior two. Keeping the leg steady, reach out slow over that leg to make sure that it stayed still. Come down onto your elbow, start reaching the arm up and over your head. And again, find that space in the outside of the shoulder, the softness on the inside of the shoulder. Make sure that this right thigh is reaching towards that back foot. We'll stay here, change the arm slightly. You're gonna reach that right arm up and then turn the palm to face behind you. Can you press the shoulder back to move that hand back? And it's not as far as if I just reach the, the hand back, right? I'm pressing the shoulder back to my hand. And then bend into that elbow, bring the back of the hand to the small of your back. 
See if maybe the pressure of your hand on your back can open that top shoulder a little bit more. Exhaling. Release that arm. Start to stand yourself up, straighten your legs, turn the toes forward, maybe like wiggle some things out a little bit. It's a long time to hold into that thigh and that rotation of the hip. And we'll take all of those on the other side. So move your left toes over to the left, your right toes in slightly. Bend into your left leg, find warrior two. Set up that good space. And then we have sometimes there's a little wiggling that's necessary to find our good alignment. And then lifting the heart up into peaceful warrior. Letting the heart lift everything, the inner shoulder softens. Big breath in. Breathing out, returning the arms to warrior two, keeping the leg steady as you reach out over the front leg, bringing the elbow down and the arm up and over the nose. Feel that side body lengthening, outer shoulder reaches, inner shoulder softens. Keep pulling that left hip towards the back foot. And then just changing the top arm, lifting it up, pressing the palm back, and then feeling your collarbone, your shoulder press that palm back. It's like I took my hand right here to you and I pressed here and that's what moved your arm back. Exhale, turning the hand down behind your back. And then that little bit of pressure of the hand into the small of your back, just seeing if there's any more room to open the front of that shoulder. Big exhale. Reach back, stand yourself up. Turn the toes forward and then the heels out of the toes. Maybe you can do a little bit of footwork to bring yourself up or just bring your feet together. Yeah. You're going to do some side bending. Take your left leg behind your right leg, reach up and hold onto your left wrist. Your front of your ribs are probably lifting up here. You can see my shirt is sliding up. I want to soften that down so now my shirt's dropping down, my ribs are tucking in. I'm going to hold on to this wrist, lean out through that left hip. Feel the back of the shoulder stretch up through the arm. One more exhale. And then coming up to switch sides, just switch your legs, hold on to the other wrist, soften those ribs down, and then bump those hips over towards the right side. Outer shoulder out through the arm. Big exhale. Stand yourself up, release your arms, unwind your legs. Come into a warrior one stance. So I'll take one foot forward, one foot back. We'll just do a pyramid pose on each side. I like to say warrior one stance because we have this idea of having the legs a little bit separate. It's not super long. The thing we change here is to make the front leg straight. We're still trying to bring both hips forward, but it's an exact kind of movement. You can have your hands at your hips, especially if your shoulders are feeling a little bit tender, but do keep the shoulders open. I've been liking taking the hands, interlacing them, leaving the elbows bent at the small of my back. It's just a little bit of extra oomph without me feeling like I have to muscle my elbows back. And then lifting the belly up, lifting the heart forward. And in a good hammy stretch, make sure that your front hip isn't reaching out towards the side, but it's pulling back, yeah? keeping those hips square towards your front. Two more breaths. Exhale, lift your belly up. Release your arms if you had any sort of bind going on. We'll just switch the legs. Whenever when you head forward, it's not your back foot. Make sure you've still got the space. So kind of like checking out what's my warrior one stance and then finding that front straight leg. And the hands go back. Maybe you switch the interlacing of your fingers so that they're wound up the weird way so that we're not attached to any one specific way of doing things. And then the heart goes forward. The front hip relaxes back. Both feet press down firmly, finding the breath. One more inhale, big exhale, 
lifting yourself up. Now unwind our arms, set both feet up and towards each other. We are going to do a standing balance. You can take this in the dancer's pose if you want to. You're always welcome to adapt it a little bit further. I'm going to cue just a very uh, aware, aligned quad stretching. So if this means that you're coming closer towards your wall, if this means that you know grabbing onto your foot is a little bit hard, you might grab your strap and use the strap to hold your foot. If you feel like it's complicated with the strap, your pant leg works fine, you just grab that that way. I'm going to hold on to the foot. Notice both of my knees are down. Just pick one. That's fine. Same arm, same leg. Because we are just working on that intelligent quad opening, I'm going to say grabbing from the outside of your foot is totally fine. If you want to try to grab from the inside of your foot, it will often help to bring both knees down. So if you did want to kick further in the dancer's pose, it'll keep that knee from flying out to the back. If you've got the outside of the foot, I'm going to lift and open the pelvis. Think of the shoulder softening back and then feel your heart lifting up. Relax that knee down. For a little extra oh, you might push this foot back in the hand slightly. Just a little bit, right? Like there's not pushing the foot in the hand. That's pushing the foot in the hand. One more inhale. If you're still here, I know it's been a while. And then slowly release that leg coming down. Give a good wiggle around, especially if you were standing for a long time with this hip. Patting optional, patting optional. And then find the other side. So holding the foot wherever it makes sense to you. If you are trying to take this a little further back, then if that's part of your practice today, then try to hold the inside of the foot. I'm going to lift up, keep my knees mostly in line here. So I'm trying to bring the slide down, open the hips, release the collarbone down. Maybe I push the foot into the hand a little bit, which increases the intensity of opening this. So just know that that might be a bit much. Feel your heart lifting up, the backs of your ears lifting up. Breathing in. Exhaling, slowly releasing your foot. And down, giving a little wiggle. Okay. We are going to work towards, oh, you know what? Let's, let's work towards having a bind in side angle. So I'm just going to take a snap up again. Let's not do that. Grab your strap. We will use it here. Set up for warrior two legs. So you've got your toes going over towards there. You're going to take a strap behind your head. If your strap is not long enough for you to fully extend your arms, do like a cat, like a, a W shape here. So you can still feel the pulling apart. If you can get your arms fully extended. Kind of got my strap resting at the backs of my shoulders. Bend into this front leg, and you're going to hold on to the strap and reach apart so you feel the strength opening across your chest. So I've got a bind in the connection here, an attachment that I'm still using to open my heart. Breathe in, breathe out. Keep holding the strap, but release your fingertips. You kind of let loose some of that tension in that give a little belly dance, shimmy thing. Uh, bounce it. From here, now you're going to take the strap, you're just going to drape it over your left shoulder. You're going to take your right elbow down. And then you're going to take your top hand and reach it behind your back. You want to hold onto this strap. Hold on to the end of the strap that's behind your back. So I've got a flapping back there. You may have to come back down to your elbow. So I'm holding it way up here, way up behind my back. Now, if I look down underneath, should be able to find that bottom strap. And I don't even need to reach my elbow all the way under and have my hands anywhere near each other. Like mine are like way far apart here. But I can still pull into the strap with both hands. Like I'm pulling the strap apart and my top shoulder opens. Is that kind of cool? So using that connection, I might come in closer. I'm pulling both ends and my top collarbone opens and my bottom collarbone opens. Exhaling, release your grip on the strap, start to come up. I'm gonna adjust my blinds because they got very dark in case you didn't notice. <laughs> and then let's move towards 
the other side. It's not any better. Come into warrior two. Go ahead and take your hands behind your strap behind your back and then reach your arms up and shift this again. Okay. <laughs> so dark. Good. Check out the alignment in your legs. Feel your, your hands pulling apart on that strap, noticing what opens up. Exhaling, softening. And let that go. Do some bouncing around for a second. Be right back. Yeah. That's better. Maybe not. Real life yoga. Okay, you're gonna take the strap over your top shoulder. And then we're gonna come down. This bottom elbow goes down. This top hand needs to grab the strap behind my back. So I'm grabbing back here. And then my other arm is gonna go underneath to grab it about here. And I only have to be down this far. I can still take my hands and pull the strap apart. And you see how much my chest is opening. My collarbones are broadening. Yeah. And you could be further. You could try to wrap it underneath and grab further. That's only if that's useful. And we're just using this attachment to broaden our heart space. One more exhale. And you're going to release the strap. Start to take yourself up. Wiggle around in your shoulders. And then we're gonna come down into a seat. Take your strap, set it off someplace where it might be useful to you. Come down into a seat, bound angle, feet together, knees out wide, and rest forward like this. Grab a lamp. Letting your heart soften forward. Just finding a version of that shape that feels really good on your body. Maybe. Okay, good. Okay, slipping down here. I need to adjust my points ready. One more exhale. And then starting to set yourself up. I take the legs and flip them over towards the right side. So I'm creating that pinwheel sort of shape. We're gonna come back into deer pose. So you might come back onto your right forearm, maybe your left forearm. If your knee floats up like this, go back to having just one forearm down and feel your hip lifting up. And that'll be where you find this thigh stretch. I really want to have this whole quad open right up through the front of the hip flexor. Maybe eventually you do come down onto both forearms, but it's not necessary. You're still back here. You might just be getting this uh, thigh a, a firm palm massage, rubbing up and down it just to help release that tissue. One more breath. And coming up, you'll take both hands over, kind of walk yourself up. We're just going to switch the legs over towards the other side. We've got this pinwheel shape. This foot is not in super close to this hip. And you might walk your hands back. Maybe you come down onto your left forearm, leaving the knee down, letting the hip lift up if anything does. Maybe it's both forearms. Still moving the breath. One more inhale, softening as you exhale. And if you've got both arms back, you just cross the back end over, walk yourself up. And then 
we're gonna come up onto our hands and knees. Make sure to cloud up your hands if you need any extra. Just one pose on each side. You will use probably your strap here, unless it's really easy for you to grab your foot. So if I'm gonna be mirroring you, I'm gonna come to look like this. I'm gonna have one toe facing back behind me and one foot towards the back. So I can leave my hips open, yeah? Just take your arm up, turn your palm to face back, and then use your top shoulder to move that palm back. And we're gonna use that same action. You might use the strap to kind of lasso your foot here, or you could fake holding your foot where you could hold onto your foot. We find this chapasana variation, this heart opening, where I kick the foot back into my hand. Try not to have the knee way, the foot way up here. Yeah, I want to have the foot more in line with my knee. Heart moving forward, hips moving forward, maybe looking up if my balance is awesome, which sometimes it's not. And then slowly softening your heart opening, relaxing that foot. Coming down onto your knees, maybe wiggle your hips around a little bit. And I'll show from the back this time. Again, strap stuff, totally optional. If it's not serving you, you leave it alone. We already did the thing we needed the strap for. So you're going to turn the back toes back, the other foot comes to the back of your mat, and you lift up. Check yourself first by pressing the palm back and feeling that shoulder opening the arms. So this is a big chest stretch. And then you use that as you bend into the knee, reach back and grab for the foot or fake holding onto the foot. You can still reach the foot in your hand back to open the heart in this position. Binding is always optional. Lift up, open up, take up space, breathe. Maybe look upwards, maybe, not necessary. And then soften your heart, your knee, your thigh. Bring the foot down, the knee down. I'll come down into a seat, swing the legs out in front of you. I'm not applying any pressure down onto your knees. Just rest your palms on your knees with only the weight of your palms resting. This is to move the skin around on your knees a little bit. And go in both directions. And we'll start coming down onto our backs. If there's something that you want to have handy for Shavasana, you might want to bring that in closer to you, but we'll start off down with feet on the floor, arms resting down by our sides, resting down into the floor, letting the back tissues relax. Feeling the effect of gravity on our body in this space. You've got a couple of options of what to do with your hands. If your shoulders have already gotten a lot of work and you don't want to overdo it, just make sure your arms are open enough to take a twist. If you like to open that chest face up a little softer, you could just have the arms kind of flopped open above your head. If you want to get a little bit more opening on those shoulders, you can hold on to opposing elbows, relaxing the insides of shoulders, getting a good stretch from the outer armpit up to the elbows. Leave the knees bent, lift your toes up towards your shin so your feet are flexed. Make sure your feet are about mat width apart or about a little bit more than hip width apart. And then keeping the feet flexed, drop your knees over towards the right side, soften your belly down, reach that left knee out, relax from your armpits up towards your elbows. Two more breaths. Relax your shoulders, bring the knees up. Wiggle around whatever finds itself off the center. Flexing your toes again, we'll take both knees over towards the other side. Maybe you reach those armpits up to the elbows, soften those inner shoulders.
One more round of breath. And then bring your knees back up. Release your arms down by your sides. Bring your feet hip width apart, so maybe a little bit narrower than they just were. Heels in nice and close to your hips. Wiggle your shoulders underneath your heart. Press the palms down. Lift your hips up. If this feels good, you stay here. If you want to go a little bit further, you might hold hands with yourself in order to wiggle those shoulders in more and find a deeper bridge pose. Push that into all four corners of the feet. Inner thighs lift up and towards the pelvis. On your last inhale, perhaps the heart opens and lifts a little bit more. And then relax your shoulders, release your bind, slowly return your hips down to the floor. Bring those feet out a little bit wider again and let the knees knock against each other. Noticing where you're holding tension. Allowing it to relax. Not berating or judging ourselves for points of tension or points of discontent. Just noting, noting that we can let those feelings go. It's okay to feel them. We just don't necessarily want to hold too tightly. And bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a little squeeze. Cross one ankle over the other, reach outside of your legs to hold on towards your ankle or your shin, whatever it is that's easy for you to hold on to. Maybe there's still a little rocking side to side as we release into the lower back. And switching the cross of your ankles. Releasing the cross of your ankles, setting the soles of the feet down. Take your right ankle over your left knee. If you want to put a block or a pillow behind your head, just to make sure that your shoulders and neck don't get tense, you're welcome to do that. So think about reaching the right arm in between the legs, hold on to the left thigh, and relax your hips down. All right, the hip and lower back release to balance out our back bendy, heart opening practice. Take another full round of breath, really soften into your exhale. Release your hands, drop your left foot down, slide your right leg over so your legs are a little crossed. And then hop your hips a little bit over towards the right. Roll your knees over towards the, the left. I like to catch on the right foot so it's not too intense. Let the belly fall in towards the spine, stretching that outer hip. One more exhale. And then draw the legs back towards the center. Unwind your legs. Find that balanced neutral position. You might have to wiggle your hips around a little bit. And then take your left ankle up onto your right knee. Left arm goes in between the legs to hold on to the bottom thigh. Or you just leave the right foot down and let your left knee open up and take the stretch a little bit more passive, a little more gentle on hips. One more exhale. Gently releasing your right foot down, slide that left leg over, hop your hips over to the left and let the knees drop over towards the right. Catch yourself with the foot if that helps you to feel a little bit more supported and less intense. The belly softens, the eyebrows relax. One more breath.
and then coming back to the center, unwinding your legs, wiggling the hips back to neutral, bringing the arms in closer by your sides. If there's another pose that you'd like to take before Shavasana, going there, maybe you take a seated meditation, maybe you wiggle the shoulders underneath the heart a bit more first, and let the legs slide out, or staying bent, coming into Shavasana.
as you start to come back towards your body and your consciousness, staying soft and easy with yourself. I want to share uh, some words from poet Adrian Michael Green. These last weeks and counting have been some of the toughest, even longer, and for some only a few days, but it has been challenging. And you need to give yourself some grace, some encouragement, some consideration. No way anything can be done how you used to do things, but you're doing it. You're doing it and you're doing it great. Say these things to maybe help you get through that next meeting, next shift, next conversation, next, next trial, next test, next screen time, next walk to the fridge, next walk outside. Breathe more today than you did yesterday. Take a deep, deep breath and give yourself all the care you haven't felt and need. Say the words, feel the words, maybe some tension will fall away, even for a bit. This isn't normal. And what you're feeling is normal. The pressure to navigate this successfully is burdensome. And you are being successful, even if you think you aren't. As you start to bring yourself back, maybe rolling over to one side and offering yourself gratitude for the opportunity to practice. And starting to work your way up into your own version of a comfortable seat. Bringing your hands together at your heart. Lifting your heart up. Letting it remain open. We seal our practice with an OM. Deep breath in. Ah. Bowing down to the love and the light that resides within each of our hearts, within all hearts. Namaste. That was luscious. Thank you. Thank you. I can't even get up. I just may stay here for the rest of the afternoon with my feet on the chair. My feet are up on the chair. You stay there. I have a book under my head. I don't know. You know, it's great having the, the my face go the other way. Yeah. You know, the cheeks go back. You know, it's like such a restful situation. Mm -hmm. So I said goodbye to you two. See you next Monday. Sounds good. I'll be here so much. I've been anxious, and that was really Same. <laughs> Tomorrow's the big day. Yeah. Well, lots Everybody of Everybody I things. know that. Go on, Susan. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, I'm just I'm just thinking that everybody I know who prays is praying right now. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that works for some things. If anything, if it helps us here, I think that that's doing its good. Part. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, putting out the goodness, not the hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I I just, you know, I don't want to have to move from the United States. So I'm hoping that, you know, things work out. Yeah. So I'll see you guys later on the greatest. Bye. Bye, everyone. You have will. Thank you. Thank you, April.